Today, I'm going to get to listen to an astronaut uh, from the International Space Station. This is going to be fun. Let's get going. Today I'm in the shack. Unfortunately, it's raining out and kind of cold and what I'm doing is time sensitive. I'd have preferred to have been outdoors, but uh, you know, weather conditions make me be inside. Uh, today there's a scheduled contact between the International Space Station and Kettridge uh, Magnet School here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm gonna be able to listen in on it, at least one side. Uh, there's an uplink on uh, VH, I'm sorry, on UHF, and the downlink is on the two meter band. And I'm gonna be listening in on that. So they schedule these things uh, pretty far in advance. And what will happen is a local amateur or club will come in, set up a radio, antenna, everything the kids need. And, uh, and they'll be able to ask astronaut or astronauts questions uh, while they're orbiting the Earth. It's a really cool setup. If you want to learn more, if you want to see if there's going to be one in your area that you can listen into, go ahead and go to ariss.org. I'll put a link in the description, but you can go there and you can see a schedule of when they're coming. And if you're in that general area, you should be able to tune, tune to 145.800 and listen in. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So I've got my Baofeng UV5R. It's tuned to 145.800. I've got my diamond antenna, which is a BNC antenna, so I have a little adapter here, and I'm just going to listen in uh, to what the astronaut has to say as he's answering the kids' questions. They're going to be streaming it live on Facebook, too, so I'll check in and see what the kids look like, but it should be pretty exciting. Uh, so here's, here we go. These are students from Ketteridge Middle School asking questions to astronauts on the International Space Station. Only hearing one side of the conversation. So the answer is every time you go to this, you launch to space, you typically launch with a different crew and you'll be uh, joining a different crew when you get up here. And in my time that I've been up here, we've had as many as nine uh, on board. And right now we have only three. So it fluctuates. It's typically around six. And uh, so, yes, you do get to meet new people, um, but you train for a year or two prior to launching with that crew. So you get to know everybody really well before you launch into space. Ted Ridge is in Atlanta. If I had an antenna up on the roof, I'd probably be able to hear the uplink as well. But the uplink's on a different frequency. So I'm just monitoring the downlink. That means coming from the space station. Uh, yes, in terms of maximum number, like I said, the number on board will fluctuate between three and six usually, but we have seen as many as 9, 10, 11, and even 12 at one point. But uh, right now there are 15 nations that are part of the International Space Station program. And for large space agencies like the European Space Agency that represent more than one country, those countries have to take turns. The major partners of the ISS are Russia and the United States. And so there's always a Russian and an American on board. And then the other nations take turns. It's great to hear how clear it is. Um, you know, VHF, this is 145.800. Super clean path to the International Space Station. Uh, Sounds great. great question because, like I mentioned, there are 15 partner nations. The official languages on board the International Space Station are Russian and English. And so everybody, regardless of what their native language is, will learn to speak English and Russian to a certain proficiency level. So I had to learn Russian. But my Italian crewmate, Luca Parmentano, who just recently left, he had, uh, speaks both Russian, English, Italian, and also French. So most astronauts know a couple of languages. They're streaming it live on Facebook behind me, so you can see when the kids go up. Well, Luca, but just about everything that we do on the space station is a little bit harder than it is on Earth, because as you can imagine, the things floating around, it's a lot harder to keep track of things. You can see I have to keep uh, adjusting the orientation to match the polarity of my antenna with the space station. Uh, 
but we do like seasonings as well. And the seasonings that we use are a lot of things that you would enjoy on Earth. We're going to catch up up here. We have salsa, we have cheese spread, we have peanut butter, and all is stuff that we like on Earth, and we like it in States just as well. Tracking the progress of the space station using SAT H. Getting a little close to the horizon now. I'm using the rubber duck antenna, my diamond antenna. Um, might not get another. Yeah, I'm losing it. If I had a better uh, UHF, VHF antenna up and deployed, I would certainly get better results, but I'm pretty happy with that. That's really cool uh, that the astronauts take the time. Uh, schedule these uh, QSOs with schools and let the kids ask questions and talk to a real astronaut while they're orbiting the Earth. Super cool stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and put them down in the comment. I'll put a link to the ARISS.org website down in the description below. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, uh, like the video, and subscribe. This is K4BBL. I'm Clear73.